Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to First United Methodist Church. I'm Kay Campbell, a member here filling in for our Pastor David Stewart, who is attending annual conference. It's just such an honor and a privilege to worship with you today, both you here in person and those of you who are online. I'd ask that you take a moment to fill out your Connect card found in your bulletin and place that in the offering plate a little later in the service. And for those of you who are watching on our Facebook page, please click on like or share or add a comment so that we know that you are worshiping with us. Let me share a few things that are coming up. David will be on vacation the next two weeks, so Chris Gonzalez, our youth pastor, will be taking the pulpit. And I know he would really appreciate your prayers and your support. Then the first Sunday in July, we'll be welcoming our new pastor, John Gregory, and his wife, Diane. The following Sunday, July 9th, we'll once again have a united service, a united Sunday, where all the services are combined into one, this time at the 11 o'clock hour. And following that, we'll have a church picnic in the Life Center. Meat and drinks will be provided, and we just ask you to bring a side or a dessert. You know, this meal that we'll have afterwards is a great opportunity for us to show the Gregories our hospitality and to give them a warm and loving welcome to this congregation. So please plan on being there. You won't want to miss it. Sandy, anything else to add? Okay. <laughs> Let us now prepare our hearts and minds for worship as the choir leads us. Please stand for the call to worship. My name is Sally Gregg and I'll be your liturgist this morning. Please join me. Come, now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time to worship. We gather today as people call as God, hmm, I'll begin again. We gather today as people God calls to go and share the good news. We gather as God sent out people. We gather to listen and share God's work in our lives, our families, and our neighborhoods. We proclaim the goodness of God's love together. We gather to respond to God's grace as we continue on the path of discipleship. We hear God's call and learn to say yes to God together. We gather to again hear God's call to go as God commissions us to love God and neighbor in everything that we do. We go knowing that as God's called, gathered, and sent out people, we are not alone as we carry the weight of God's call into the world together. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> My name is Cooper Hornbeck. I have the honor of being the choir director this morning. Please go ahead and get your hymnals out. We're going to be singing number 110, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. We're going to be singing verses 1, 2, and 4 of number 110.
The affirmation is on, of faith is number 885 found in your hymnal. If you would please join me on the modern affirmation. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is the one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. We believe in God the Father, infinite in wisdom, power, and love, whose mercy is over all his works, and whose will is ever directed to his children's good. We believe in Jesus Christ, Son of God and Son of Man, the gift of the Father's unfailing grace, the ground of our hope, and the promise of our deliverance from sin and death. We believe in the Holy Spirit as the divine presence in our lives, whereby we are kept in perpetual remembrance of the truth of Christ and find strength and help in time of need. We believe that this faith should manifest itself in the service of love as set forth in the example of our blessed Lord, to the end that the kingdom of God may come upon the earth. Amen. of silent prayer, then I will pray, and then we will pray together the Lord's Prayer. So let us now silently lift our concerns to God. Heavenly Father, thank you for drawing us into your presence this morning. We bow our heads and our hearts before you, forever humbled by your overwhelming capacity to love us so much that you gave your only Son, Jesus, who took our place on the cross, who took our sins, so we may have eternal life with you. Help us always to seek your face, to ask for your guidance in directing our energy and focus to serving you and to serving you alone. Forgive us when we don't heed the promptings of your Holy Spirit. Forgive us when we doubt your power and your promises. Strengthen our faith, Lord. Strengthen our resolve as a congregation to be your hands and feet, to be your witness and a light to our community as we share the hope and peace that can be found only in you, Lord. We lift up those who are sick, whether physically or spiritually, and we ask for their healing. We lift up those who have lost loved ones. May they feel your comfort. Be with those who are brokenhearted and feel rejected. Help them to feel your presence and to know that they are not alone. 
And Lord, we thank you for answered prayer, for the joy of that, for the peace of trusting in you, for your love, mercy, and grace. Thank you for being our mighty fortress and our firm foundation, for you are faithful. Now let us pray as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As the ushers come forward for the offering plates, let us pray. Lord, all that we have is from you. We now return a portion of what you have so generously given to us. Please accept and bless this offering so that we may be a blessing to others through service to you. Amen.
Before the scripture, I would like to remind everyone of the funeral of James Barnhill tomorrow. The visitation will be here at 10 and the service following at 11. Scripture this morning is from the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 3, verses 10 through 17. It is Paul's charge to Timothy. You, however, know all about my teaching, my way of life, my purpose, faith, patience, love, endurance, persecutions, sufferings, what kind of things happened to me in Antioch, Iconium, and Lystra, the persecutions I endured. Yet the Lord rescued me from all of them. In fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted, while evil men and impostors will go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you learned it, and how from infancy you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my Let us pray. Lord, you are the God of light, of love, of truth, and of our salvation. We pray now that your Holy Spirit will open our hearts to the wonders of your word. And may the messenger be hidden behind the cross and only you be lifted up. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Well, I want to thank Pastor David for entrusting me with this privilege uh, to talk with you this morning. And I'd, I'd like to spend the next few minutes telling you about a very dear friend. This dear friend is always available. This dear friend is a trustworthy companion and is always lovingly truthful. This dear friend is one we can all learn about and learn more about every day. This dear friend is one we can grow to love and love more deeply every day. This dear friend is one who will show us how to live and to live more joyfully and abundantly every day and so much more. This dear friend I want to tell you about is the Bible. Now you maybe have been thinking that I was going to say Jesus and you wouldn't be wrong because in many ways they are one in the same. That is, God revealed to us in the flesh and in the Word. John writes in his Gospel, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In the Bible we find Jesus all the way from the opening of Genesis as God spoke creation into being by his very Word, all the way through to the last verse of Revelation. Jesus was never plan B. God chose just the right time to send Jesus to this world in the flesh to dwell among us. And at just the right times, God chose for his word, the Bible, to be written. Theologian Bishop Pascal describes the Bible this way. The Old Testament can be summed up in the word Christ or Messiah. The New Testament summed up in the word Jesus. And the summary of the entire Bible is that Jesus is the Christ. The Old Testament sacrificial system pointed all along to Jesus, 
whose sacrifice became the ground of our hope in the promise of our deliverance from sin and death. Like Jesus, the Bible is both human and divine. It's human in that it was written down by human hands, but totally through divine inspiration. As Paul describes this, uh, the scriptures to Timothy in our reading this morning, it is God-breathed. It is God's words written by people inspired by the Holy Spirit. In the Bible, you will find some 2,500 times God said, or the Lord has said, or thus says the Lord, and so forth. God has made it very clear that he is speaking through this book. And as Dr. J. Vernon McGee writes, if God spoke out of heaven right now, he would just repeat himself because he has said all he wants to say. We can be absolutely certain that God has given us in his holy book all he wants us to have in order to live the life he wants us to live. And though the Bible is full of people who are imperfect, deceitful, and some are just downright evil, that's because all of us humans are flawed, but God, God himself, never falls short. So please consider this about this wonderful God-breathed treasure. Every book, every chapter, every verse, and every word from Genesis through Revelation is holy because God is holy. It is good because God is good. It is truth because God is truth. It is perfect because God is perfect. Therefore, every book, every chapter, every verse, and yes, every word is important. And it's worthy of our time and effort to read, to study, to meditate on, to pray about, to digest, to obey, and to share. Dr. David Jeremiah comments on this subject. Obedience to the written word of God is the obligation of discipleship. The way a person regards the Bible is the way he or she regards Christ, the living word. And may I say to you that when we deny the Bible's truth and authority, we are denying Christ just as surely as Peter denied him that night in the courtyard when Jesus was arrested. And if you still have an issue trusting the Bible as God's holy, perfect, and absolute truth, consider the words of Billy Graham when he said, since the Bible is God's word, we shouldn't be surprised if it, Satan tries to convince us otherwise. The very first question in the Bible came from Satan's lips, casting doubt on what God had told Adam and Eve. Did God really say not to eat of every tree? Then Satan became bolder, flatly denying what God had said. Oh, you surely will not die. Ever since that dark day in the Garden of Eden, one of Satan's most persistent strategies has been to make us doubt the truthfulness and authority of God's word. And if we treat the Bible lightly, we are not taking God seriously. So I'm here today to encourage you to give this holy word of God, all of it, the respect it is due and the time required to read it from cover to cover. Every book, every chapter, every verse, and every word. Now you would never think to buy a book or check one out at the library and then just randomly read passages from it. Yet sadly, that's as far as many Christians get in reading the Bible. Of course, the Bible is not like any ordinary book. Certainly God can and will speak to us when we open our hearts as we read any portion of his scripture. But if we will take in God's word entirely and completely, we will come to know God more fully, and we will be blessed beyond measure, as on these pages Jesus is revealed to us who he was, who he is, and who he is to come. So then what holds us back from reading the Bible as we should? Some of us say, well, we just don't have the time. 
Please consider that our time is not really our own to begin with. It belongs to God, who gives us breath each moment of the day. I would ask that just as you tie the portion of your income, that you would also consider tithing a portion of your time each day to God, to pray and to read the Bible. In addition to reading a daily devotional, such as the Upper Room or Our Daily Bread, find and use a reading plan, one that will help you read the entire Bible through in a year. And that will be a great way to help you allocate your time and keep you on track. Another reason others say they don't get all the way through the Bible is, quite frankly, they find many passages, especially in the Old Testament, boring. When they get bogged down in details, repetitious instructions, those long lists of genealogies. But I say to you that God has his reasons for giving us every word in the Bible. And if we would change our focus from, what is this passage saying to me, instead to, what is this passage telling me about God? And that enables us to understand God's purposes better in providing such extensive list, details, and instructions. Switching the focus from ourself to God also helps us when we come across passages that we may find troubling or hard to accept. We must use the lens of God's character, his goodness, his faithfulness, to understand better what God says and does. And I would also add, as I've told the ladies in, my Bible, in the Bible study on Tuesday morning, if you will look for Jesus on every page of the Old Testament, you'll find the Old Testament to be so much more exciting, especially when you see those glimpses of the pre-incarnate Son of God, Jesus before Bethlehem, as Anne Graham Lotz describes him. Another reason some don't read the entire Bible is that all those names and places, especially in the Old Testament, are just too hard to pronounce. Think about your name and how your name is important to you, and you want people to know your name and to say it correctly. So for the many people and place names in the Bible, get a self-pronouncing Bible. It, it will have the diacritical markings to show you how to pronounce the words. And I would uh, suggest the New King James Version. If we skim over the names, we actually miss another, another level of understanding because it's worthwhile to note that names, especially Hebrew names, are very carefully chosen and each has its own special meaning. And a study Bible will give you those insights. But the reason I hear most often as to why people give up reading the Bible completely is that so much of it is just so hard to understand. So they get discouraged and give up. You may have seen the television commercial where Franklin Graham is asked if he understands all the Bible. He says, quite honestly, no, I don't understand it all, but I believe it all. And although the Bible is complex in many ways, I say to you that it is also quite simple. Simply put, God says what he means, and he means what he says. And yet, because our minds are human, sometimes we have a little trouble grasping what God says and what he means. But we have not because we ask not. God knows we need help. And as Max Lucado states in his recent book, help is here, and that help is the Holy Spirit. Without asking the Holy Spirit to teach us and instruct us in our reading, quite frankly, we simply won't get a lot of it. Jesus tells his disciples in the 14th chapter of John, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and, and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Jesus didn't say the Holy Spirit would teach us a few things, but all things, at least all we need to know. Furthermore, Jesus says in John 16, 7, Truly I tell you, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. On this side of the cross, 
When we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit indwells us. Jesus said, on that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, you are in me, and I am in you. In other words, the Holy Spirit is Jesus living in us. He's the divine presence in our lives, whereby we are kept in perpetual remembrance of the truth of Christ and find strength and help in time of need. Help is here. So let us approach our reading of the Bible with humility and ask God for help in understanding his word. And please let us not forget all the wonderful small groups we have available here at this church, Bible studies, Sunday school classes, where the Holy Spirit leads us as we discuss with other believers what we read in the Bible. And there are many other helpers, those from trusted spirit-led writers and pastors that include study Bibles, Bible commentaries, podcasts, online resources, and even apps for your phone. Not only is help here, but it's available in abundance and easily accessible. And I'll be glad to talk with you and share with you those resources that I find very helpful. Consider now for a moment from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, the two travelers on the road to Emmaus as they were discussing the recent crucifixion of Jesus, when unknowingly to them, it was the resurrected Jesus who began walking with them, sharing all that the Old Testament declared about the Messiah and what would take place. Verse 27, And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he, Jesus, explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. Remember, I said to look for Jesus on every page of the Old Testament. You know, and I used to think about this, uh, these travelers and that conversation. Wouldn't it have just been so amazing to have been there for that, for that talk? You think about the ultimate Bible study. Jesus was leading it himself. But, you know, you and I can have that road to Emmaus experience every day with Jesus in our Bible reading and study. Even though Jesus is no longer walking on this earth, he is invisibly present in every believer through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, Jesus in us. So every day, we can ask him to walk with us, to open our eyes to the scriptures as we listen to him, and then our hearts, too, can burn within us as our faith is fanned into flames by Jesus himself. As we learn more and more by reading and studying the Bible, we will grow to love the Bible more. We will grow to love God more. And I ask you right now to make that commitment today that if you have not read the Bible completely, that you will. Or if you have read it, to read it again from cover to cover. Say it with me. Every book, every chapter, every verse, and every word. And you, too, will discover that you have a most dear friend, one who is always available, always trustworthy, and always true. And the more we learn and read and live the Word of God, the more we learn about God and his promises, about Jesus and his purpose, and about the Holy Spirit and his power. God truly has given us all we need to know in order to live the life he wants us to live. Learn it, love it, and live it, all to the glory of God. Let us pray. Father, thank you for loving us and for speaking to us through this wonderful treasure of the Bible. May your Holy Spirit convict us of the importance of your holy word. And we ask that you give us the desire to know you more, to love you more, to live for you more, and to share you more with the people you put in our path every day. Give us the strength and the courage to be not only hearers and readers of the word, but doers also, as you equip us for every good work, all for your glory and honor. And we ask this in the name of your holy precious and risen Son, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Please stand and get your hymnals out. Let us sing the hymn of invitation, number 529, How Firm a Foundation. We're going to be singing verses 1, 2, and 5 of number 529, How Firm a Foundation. the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.